Hello, and thank you for viewing this presentation entitled, What is Technology Doing to Bring Mass Care Up to Speed? My name is Gary Freeman. I work for the City and County of Denver as the Emergency Manager at our Department of Human Services. As our Human Services Department also serves the city as the lead agency for mass care management in the city, we have been engaged both in the city and in our state all hazards region for several years, working to broaden participation among other departments, agencies, community partners, and those in emergency management in the realm of mass care. Today, we will look at something very special and quite helpful we've developed in our region to apply state-of-the-art technology to community response to mass care emergencies. This has been a huge effort with many players from our region who all stepped forward to contribute to what we'll be viewing now. In emergencies and disasters everywhere, the abilities of governments and a great many community partners to meet the needs of people affected by those circumstances is constantly changing and always challenged. Resources rule and great effort is made in these events to assure maximum coordination happens to conserve limited resources. The process of responding to emergency and disaster incidents and providing for the needs of those displaced or otherwise impacted is a test of all the capabilities of first responders and those in the emergency management community and the governments and communities which stand behind them. We must work together. We must rapidly exchange information about the situation. We must solve challenges of transportation, supply, staffing, and facilities. We must also be able to coordinate actions, not just within our communities, but across borders into neighboring cities, counties, and regions within states. In Colorado, we have incidents with sufficient frequency that we're constantly reminded of the need not only to be ready for them, but to experience them, work through them, and learn from them. Our incidents are different from the incidents seen elsewhere in the country, but the impact on the needs of our citizens is pretty much the same. Appropriate, coordinated, and effective responses are critical. Lives are always at stake, as is the well-being of entire communities. So let's focus on one aspect of the problem. In a disaster, community emergency management needs to know what shelters are available immediately. What is their capacity, their capabilities? How are they equipped? How do, who do we call to open those shelters? There's many other related questions that usually are asked during those conversations. And what we were finding was that even such basic questions were hard to answer and often took lots of effort and time. The city and county of Denver is one of 10 counties in our Colorado state designated North Central All Hazards Region. Emergency management offices across the 10 counties in that north central region were asking a lot of the same questions every time one of us needed to provide shelter and related emergency services. People from these emergency management offices, from other governmental agencies, and from many community partners were sharing experiences, asking questions of one another, and offering suggestions for solutions to streamline the process. But the efforts at the regional level of our mass care committee brought these conversations together. And synergy happened. Members of the committee believed there had to be a better way than Excel spreadsheets, whiteboards, and tons of phone calls back and forth. There had to be a better way to share information in real time across jurisdictions, across boundaries, and to do this across the entire region. We had no trouble identifying the gap 
So we sought help to bridge that gap. Luckily, we could address the gap as part of an ongoing project on technology innovation for flood preparedness. In our region, through conversations over the past several years, we had identified some specific objectives for our information needs during emergencies, disasters, and other events. Situational awareness is key during such events. When it came to incidents which required sheltering of displaced citizens, we hoped to provide a system that would identify and inventory shelters during a steady state, help emergency managers conduct analysis on shelter gap areas, such as capacity, access and functional needs capability, or shelter locations and coverage, allow use of a simple tool to change shelter status and edit shelter information, inform decision makers of the status of sheltering across the entire region by using the North Central Region Shelter Management Tool Dashboard, and empower the public with the NCR Shelter Management Tool public map, allowing them to identify shelters nearby and receive directions. That was a tall order. I'm going to let you decide how well we achieved these objectives as we take a closer look at what was produced. Uh, the following is a live demonstration of the system. Uh, well, as live as a pre recorded presentation can be uh, of what the North Central Region Situational Awareness System looks like. So let's try this. This is the uh, welcoming page, the home page of the uh, the site. And uh, as uh, we have created it, there's uh, a number of items of uh, really useful information. The uh, list of recent system changes enhancements is in the uh, what's new section. There's some other information about uh, the difference between base data and incident specific data. And I'll be talking about that as we move through and start exposing some of the rest of the content. There is a technical user guide for technical people, GIS and IT staff. There's also a training video playlist right now. There are uh, three different training videos that are present that we produced locally. Actually, they were done through the help of our uh, NAPSIG partner in this process. And on the tabs at the top, we're now going to go to the Edit Shelters tab. Uh, the purpose of this page um, is to be able to modify baseline data. As I start showing you some of the content, watch for the letter B associated with the entries, uh, as well as incident specific data. The incident specific data has the letter, uh, capital letter A in parentheses associated. 
um, just watch for those as we go through and start actually um, playing with this live system. Uh, we can make choices for how the elements of this map display. We can uh, filter the display. I could choose, for example, to only see the stuff that is in Denver. And of course, I can blow that up a little bit so you get a better idea. Standard navigation tools are up on the upper left side of the screen. Uh, the uh, widgets are on the upper right. And uh, right now I'm going to go into the uh, editor tool to allow us to start making some changes here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a shelter that is way out in the extreme southwest part of the city. And when I bring up by simply clicking, left clicking on the uh, icon, it brings up the basic information. I, if all I want to do is glance at it, I can scroll through and see all of the things that are present or I can go to the smart editor and that brings up all of the data in a, a little easier to use format and allows for me to go in and start changing stuff. So the first thing that I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to change this to open. And notice, uh, as I was mentioning just a moment ago, baseline data is the shelter name, the incident specific data with the A associated is uh, right there. And um, I'm going to actually kind of set the uh, initial occupancy to 20 because um, we we know we already have people arriving there. Um, obviously that number will get updated. Um, as we hear back from the staff at the facility based on our internal uh, periodic reporting requirements, uh, all of that stuff is defined outside the parameters of this tool. And uh, in this case, I'm going to set this up uh, just for purposes of demonstration as an evacuation center. In our terminology, an evacuation center is a place where something has happened and we now have a bunch of people that we need to get quickly away from that space and so we're going to send them to the closest facility that would be suitable and then you know bring resources to those people uh, that's what we call an evacuation center um, this is a uh, it, because it's not being used as a shelter, um, I'm not, well, I think I'll go ahead and do this anyhow. Um, is it a non-congregate shelter? It's a yes, no question. So that's kind of asking the question backwards. A congregate shelter means we have a whole bunch of people in a big room, basically. A non-congregate shelter means we take that same big bunch of people and we parcel them out over individual rooms. Typically, it would cause you to think of a motel or a hotel kind of situation. So if I say that it is not a non-congregate shelter, the double negative <laughs> says it is a congregate shelter. Therefore, what would we expect to see but a large room with a bunch of people sitting and getting snacks and water and having a place to sit and rest and, and be quiet and uh, have their uh, needs taken care of, at least for a temporary time. I'm going to set this to open right now and I'm going to pick um, and I'm working on uh, Colorado time right now. So I'm going to set it for about uh, 
2.30. It's actually a little bit off, uh, after that. Uh, let's see, what else am I going to want to put in there? How about we be creative here and let's try to get a little bit ahead of the curve. First thing that is important to notice that we have uh, associated baseline data indicating that it is um, ADA accessible. There is no generator physically present, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say yes, because I know the people sitting behind me over here somewhere in our control room um, have already contacted the, the folks that we need to bring a, tra a a generator out on a flatbed trailer and the building has a generator quick connect so we're going to put it there just because we know we're going to have more than 20 people and in the event that whatever's going on uh, has an impact on uh, commercial power we know that we'll be in good shape. Uh, the hours of this thing uh, that we're going to operate it is from for right now, we're going to set it to be 24 hours a day. And with all of that information, um, I think the one thing uh, else that I'm going to do is I'm going to set it so that we're going to allow companion animals only. The capacity we're going to set at 20. Um, that's as much driven by our abilities to support as it is physical arrangements. Uh, and uh, total animal capacity is 20. We rely on community partner, actually a city agency um, uh, that will respond to deal with that. And at that point, I'm ready to save that change. Now notice immediately that the shelter shows as being open. I'm going to jump to a different process and I'm going to uh, create a, a, a new shelter that does not yet exist because somewhere else in the city we are having other problems. And so I'm going to go to a location that I will select. Got to follow I-25 there or I'm not going to make it. OK. And there is a building right here that I am going to now. You see nothing exists. I'm going to open a shelter, so I point at the uh, green open shelter icon and then all I do is click there and now it presents me with the ability on the fly to enter shelter data, including establishing baseline data. So I'm going to do that. And the status, of course, is open because that's what I suggested. And I'm grabbing a prepared message that will show in the public map that we'll get to in a bit. I'm going to set the occupancy. Well, I'm going to set the bed availability at 85 because that's how many rooms we've leased from this. It's really honest to goodness a hotel. Um, and I'm going to peg the current occupancy at 40 again because we've made arrangement to transport some people over there. So we know that they're coming. We just might as well account for them. And then the same proviso, as I said before, that'll get changed later as we have our periodic required reporting times being satisfied. I'm going to set this as a short term shelter. And it is a non-congregate shelter, meaning that we would expect the people to go there to be assigned to individual rooms. The open date again, I'm going to set today. 
the open time, I'm going to again set about the same time today. Um, got to fill in the county so that that will impact the other stuff that I'm going to do on the screen in a bit here. And this is a hotel motel. Um, and uh, again, some of the things that we consider um, uh, we we in some of our shelters do depend upon Red Cross support, so I'm going to declare that we'll um, at least count on them for a bit of the uh, assistance here. And um, I don't yet have all of the contact information. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right at this moment because um, we're, we're more anxious in accounting for the presence of this and being able to set the flag that says that this thing is up and running. Um, uh, there are handicap available ADA uh, rooms. There is no generator there and unfortunately also no generator quick connects. Uh, we want to include that stuff as early as we become aware of it. The hours of operation, it's a hotel, it'll be 24 hours. And because we have 85 rooms, the allowed pets count is going to be 85 because we know that this facility, oh, I'm sorry, grabbed the wrong box there. Yes, companions, animals only, and 85 because um, we know that the that the hotel will allow at least one animal per room. And the total animal capacity. And I'm going to save that. And there we go. And so that is now open. Now, um, I'm going to go over to the uh, dashboard just to kind of give you a sense of what the the uh, the big picture looks like. It'll take a moment for this to refresh. And while I'm talking about that, those of you that looked at the date um, in in a couple of weeks when this is being viewed by all of you, um, we are in uh, preparing in Denver uh, and pretty much the whole state for a major snowstorm <laughs> over the next four days. And so lo and behold, I looked at this before I started making the recording and discovered, uh-oh, somebody's already got a shelter out here on standby. That's cool. So uh, if if things start popping up on the screen, don't be alarmed. It doesn't normally do that. There's somebody in another county right now for real who is actually sitting there and doing work on those. So some options, um, if you just kind of lean back and take a look at the screen, lots of good information there. Um, uh, the, uh, the shelter count, because the selected county is set at all, that means all 10 of the counties in the region, then um, it's going to show every single one that's in the database. There's 199 of them. I just added one, which brought that total up to 200. Now, as I start to home in on information, I can go and look at Denver only. And as you saw, the minute that I did that, those numbers changed on the screen. And it showed that we have a total of 32 shelters now in, uh, available in the city and county of Denver. And one has a generator. That's the one down here at the Southwest Rec Center. Um, two of them allow pets. Again, you saw the two that we created. And 26 of the of all of the 32 shelters also um, uh, have been investigated and confirmed to have um, ADA accessibility. Notice also that the shelter occupancy versus capacity shows that we've got a total of 60 people sheltered so far. Our zero line here is when I first started and our top end for available space in our normal shelters plus whatever I just add in is 8,200 round numbers. 
people that we could shelter just by using our immediately available shelter capacity. So an executive standing and looking at this would get a very quick view and a very clear understanding of what is going on out there. All right, now um, uh, one of the other things that that we uh, end up using a lot is we can multi-select. So I can pick um, Denver County and Jefferson County, which is our western border. And uh, because we, as you can see, have both have some shelters right on the borderline between us, having that kind of a view again provides really immediate accurate information about the status of these shelters. Once this stuff is displayed on this screen, I still have the ability to click on the shelter and view. It's a little different view than what was in the edit shelter screen, but uh, again, a whole raft of information that is both baseline and incident specific information. All right, now, um, oh, and the other thing that I want to show you is I can show you only open shelters. I can show you shelters on standby. That's that one that appeared earlier today as I was preparing for this uh, recording. Or I can show only the closed shelters. And again, uh, because this, this, the county is set at all, it's displaying everything throughout all 10 counties. Next thing that I want to show you is the uh, connection to the public map. When our public information officers publicize the shelter status information map, we can preview that view in the public map. We can see what it's going to look like to the public. So if I click on this icon here, which is the Southwest Rec Center, and then I'm just going to blow that up so you can see all the rest of it. Uh, uh, note that this one for the message has a pretty darn good set of specific directions um, for people that might be traveling nearby. If we were to use that for uh, maybe there was some kind of a problem on uh, one of the highways nearby and we wanted to get people off and into the neighborhoods, that would be a way that we could do it. Uh, the other thing that comes with that is, again, from the public perspective, it brings up, in my case, because of how I'm set up in my computer, it brings up Google Maps and offers the opportunity for um, specific directions or the usual opportunities there, send the directions to your phone and so on and so forth. So no matter where the individual was, they could get directions from where they are to where they need to be. That would clearly be a, uh, a very helpful capability. So that concludes our demonstration. Uh, we want to thank you for viewing this presentation. We hope you've picked up some ideas or tips and tricks from our application that will make your mass care emergency responses smoother, faster, and more accurate. Thank you.